All right, I think we are live. We are live. Let me just make sure everybody can see us. All right, yeah, definitely. We can be seen. <laughs> we mm. can be seen. I just want to make sure I share us out so that people okay. can be joining us. Mm, how do I do this? All right, uh, we have three people watching us right now, so we are just going to begin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, everyone watching us right now, wherever you are watching us from. Thank you very much for joining us. And welcome to yet another segment of The Voice of Kavango. This is a live broadcast where we talk about issues pertaining the development of the two Kavango regions. It started, I think, we have done three so far. If I'm not mistaken, yes, we have done th three so far. The first episode and the second episode was done on YouTube, but we, we have decided to, um, you know, shift the broadcast to Facebook. This is the show where I usually have guests who come through so that we can talk about or openly discuss issues pertaining the development of the two Kavango regions. And today my guest is Mr. Franz Kanjili. Good evening, Mr. Franz. Good evening. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to have you here, or to have me here. Thank you very much for coming mm. through. I really appreciate. And to our viewers, your comments are welcomed. Your opinions are welcomed. And if you'd like to join us up here to give your opinion openly, I will also be dropping the link that you can click on so that you can join us on top here. So today we are doing part two of the topic that I discussed um, last week, we had a very amazing discussion with uh, Mr. Moses Shikerete, where we discussed why are the two Kavango regions ranked as the poorest in the country, okay? So this is according to um, just a bit of a background, in case you haven't watched the video. Um, this is according to um, uh, the report on the Namibian poverty mapping report 2015 uh, by the National Planning Commission. I'm just quickly going to run through the statistics. So it says that Kavango is amongst the top three poorest regions in Namibia and of which Kavango is topping, followed by Ohangwena and Oshikoto region respectively. And it, it is said that Namibia has an estimation of 568,418 poor people and amongst them, 21% are from the two Kavango region. So more than third, uh, one third of the population of the Kavango region is poor, and um, the region has the highest poverty headcounts of 53.2%, of which 64% of the population is materially deprived, and 50% are unemployment deprived, and 73% are deprived in terms of education, and then of course 90% deprived in terms of living environment or living condition. Very alarming indeed. So the question is, why are we ranked uh, the poorest in the country? So some people came through actually and they, they challenged this fact and said, we are not poor. So the first question I'm gonna ask Mr. Kanjili is, what are the indicators of poverty? Are we poor? Are we saying that these facts or these statistics are not correct? Are we poor at all? 
Uh, thank you very much. And, and I'm glad that you have uh, gathered all those facts. Uh, to start with, uh, poverty, poverty can be defined in different forms. But as mm-hmm. for Kavango, I don't think uh, we should really say poor because resources are in here. Uh, mm-hmm. The best perhaps could be said is uh, is that we are underdeveloped. Underdeveloped, underdeveloped. Me- underdeveloped meaning that uh, the people responsible or people that are supposed to make use of the resources are not doing so. Uh, mm-hmm. Poverty is not really what we should talk about because the region is vast and a lot of resources are just lying out there. Take take mm-hmm. for instance, uh, let's let's take for instance. Uh, the, the the higher institutions in Kavango. Mm. Kavango being the second uh, majority of the second populated region. Uh, look at how many universities do we have in here. Rundu campus is the only one which is uh, actually well established university that people can rely on. Now take uh, make a comparison with the the O regions. How many universities are found in there within a, a radius of 60, uh, 60 kilometers or so? So many universities, and the uh, Kavango only relies on Rundu campus, which is UNAM, and Kavango West, perhaps uh, IUM. So uh, this shows us that we are underdeveloped. Making making sure that people are are exposed to many things, but yet we don't know how these things are supposed to be used. Number two, if we look at our national leaders uh, in parliament or in national assembly, I don't know if you have noticed, our, li- our leaders from the region don't speak for the region. It is surprising that other leaders from different regions are the ones that are, are, putting them, are putting it in their face that this and this is happening in your region. And yet sometimes we even get angry and respond negatively to those people that are showing us or telling us that the truth about the region. Mm. It, is about, it is about our leaders that are out there that needs to, to speak for the people behind here. Because at the end of the day, it is them that should say, no, the region is in need of this. The region is in, in, in need of this. Here and this we are lacking. Can we see how we can do from the national budget and all that? But if our leaders don't speak, we will be rated poor, but not really, not really poor. We are just underdeveloped. We are not developing ourselves. I think that, 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 that is what I can say on this one. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned uh, repeatedly that we are underdeveloped. Can you perhaps yes. uh, expand on that? When, we talk, when you talk about underdevelopment, how, what exactly are you referring to? Can you expand on that? Oh, thank you very much. Under development uh, have to do with uh, the infrastructure, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, 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 manufacturing entities or production entities. Uh, like, what is it that we produce in the region here? I don't think we have anything that we can point at that this is what we produce that people can maybe rely on. In the we have we have so many people that have big farms in the region, and these farms mm-hmm. are actually just fenced along the road. And if you find out, if you try to find out what is happening inside that farm, there is nothing happening there. But the owner of the farm taps on the chest and say, "I'm a I'm a farmer with a lot of animals, for instance." But then, what sense does it make if you have so many cattle and yet? You don't do anything with the farming uh, activities that you, you pretend to have. Such, it's like you have a farm just full of bushes and you are very happy to have it. What you are farming, we don't know. How you are contributing to the community, we don't know. So it, it's like we have a holistic problem that uh, we even don't know where to start from tackling them. They keep amounting, they keep amounting on our shoulders and at the end of the day, we just sit back and uh, accept that we are poor. But mm. who are the people? The, the ministries are established. Uh, private sectors are there. What is it that is happening? People are not going to them, or the people, or those, those responsible are not coming to them. Where, where do we go? Where, where, do we, where do we start from? That is the question. 
Because those that mm-hmm. have services, for, for instance, let's talk about uh, uh, if if you look at uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs, for instance, mm. it is surprising that people are still found without uh, national documents. And then talk about the the services they offer. Poor customer service. Everybody that uh, faces that office comes out frustrated. Mm-hmm. Because you, you, you go to, a, to an office, that I'm giving an example of home affairs, you will come out, mm-hmm. you will just regret for having gone in there. And this, uh, this makes most of the, the offices here. When you go there, the, the response that you get is not what you go look for. At the end of the day, people will even decide not just to go there and say, uh, we don't have the service, but the service are there. But the question is, how are you responded to when you visit those people? So uh, poverty, poverty is actually going to be to be concluded after everything we have does not amount to anything. Everything we have does not amount to anything. So it's like uh, at the end of the day, we compare ourselves to other towns. The only the only answer we get for ourselves is that our leaders are not working for us, and the people as well are too reluctant to search for these services. I know when they when, when you are looking for something, there are those turbulence that will keep you away from it. But if we could perhaps mm-hmm. try by all means and make sure that the service providers feel frustrated because of our pressure for seeking for those services, it could be or it could be making a difference perhaps. But then uh, mm-hmm. it is like the majority have have accepted that the person A is rude to me, person B is rude to me, therefore I will not go back. And at the end of the day, we sit back. So that is the challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. So we are saying that it's our leaders that are not speaking for us. I I, I remember you mentioned that um, those in the parliament, for example, they do not speak for us and um, that we have the resources. So we we probably just don't know how to use the resources. Yes. Hence, we are being ranked the poorest, you know, um, region. Poorest region, poorest. Imagine ninety uh, percent being deprived in terms of living condition. That is alarming. Ninety percent, ninety percent. It's very much alarming if you uh, look at it. <laughs> uh, Hence, people uh, are questioning: Are these will effects? Uh, because just just imagine how 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 many or oh, how many kilometers of. Um, of rosewood we find in in Kavango region, the timber. Imagine uh, where where leaders are working. We can we not just come up with a, a strategy where we establish a factory that could process the timber that we keep exporting to China. Like in Kavango, it's it's shameful to find schools without tables or desks, chairs. Mm-hmm. But the timber keeps on going. I mean, what is what is the money being used for in terms of development? Why why don't they see importance in establishing a factory that will process the timber? And when we establish such, employment will be created and the poverty we are talking about will be alleviated in the process. So all these things, and, and let's talk about uh, how much effort people put in in terms of farming here. Uh, our our mothers uh, our mothers who keep trying to sell this fresh produce you know what mm-hmm. what what keeps them backward is the fact that we still import tomatoes from south africa while we have a, a river that is, is 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 never gets dry for instance we have good soil what is so difficult to say no from today on this and this cannot be imported in kavango it shall be produced here we are going to do it through this and this and that but then when are we going to stand up and make, make such decisions? Because such things are the only ones, are the, are the only things that will put us on the map. We have, to, we have to take advantage of what we have in our dispo, around our disposal and uh, make, make something out of it. But if we keep on looking at how things are being taken from the region, people that see the importance will do it and ourselves are just folding our hands, it's really a concern. It's a big problem. Mm-hmm.
Okay, mm. so um, we have a few comments right here. I'm just going to read them out. So um, Camille Amid is saying, if the people can't afford basic things of life, that's in large an indicator of poverty. Though Kavango region may be potentially rich due to its resources. And then mm. um, Albert Mutesi is uh, saying that Unamrundu campus is only for teaching 90%. And as you are aware, we have teachers sitting at home without employment. We cannot really depend on it. One contributing factors to the state poverty is the question of how many of our grade 12 learners qualifies to tertiary institution. Our kids are not passing that in its own creating poverty. And then the last comment that I'm going to read here is from Charlie, and he says, what is poverty first? Mr. Kanjili did not answer correctly how those responsible for statistics come up with uh, such data. How did they measure poverty? It is one thing having resources and another not using resources. How many people are without jobs? A teenage pregnancy rate. What is your buying power in terms of regions? What is the source of income almost for everyone in the regions? What are other means of production in the regions? This is what Charlie is saying. So we are still going back to the statistics of us being ranked as you know, um, number one in terms of poverty. So um, as you are saying, we have the resources, but then we do not know how to utilize the resources so that we can change the narrative. Okay, now let us look at this narrative of us being poor. How do we change? How do we perhaps change the narrative? Or before we go to that, actually, Mr. Charlie Sivambo is saying that you have not answered the question what is poverty and what exactly are the indicators of poverty why are we being ranked in other ways why are we being ranked as the poorest in namibia yeah no uh, uh, perhaps i should i should help mr mr charlie or the author or the, the author of that comment by saying if the statistics uh, do not provide the indicators of poverty it means such that such statistic cannot be relied upon. That is why I safely decided to say poverty can be defined mm -hmm. in different forms. And as for Kavango region, I don't think poverty will really suit because what I know is that we are underdeveloped. That is why mm -hmm. I would like to safely say because if a, stat if a stat statistic comes out, uh, pointing out how many percentage of people that fall in poverty and how many do not, and yet they don't point out the indicators of this poverty. It becomes a problem. And one thing that we, we need to know about uh, statistic collection is that there is a high percentage of uh, biasness and uh, there is a high percentage of respondents being able to respond. For instance, if you are asked how many meals do we eat per day, in, in Kavango, we have come to a point whereby almost every home will say we only eat once for you to know who's out there that people are not in li living in good condition. And such things are things that need to be looked at from a different perspective. I still say that poverty should not be or should not be the one describing or we should not describe Kavango as poor. Kavango is underdeveloped and it's due to the, the negligence of those responsible. Okay, so in other words, you are talking about our leaders being uh, yeah. negligent and um, not actually speaking for us. All right, mm. uh, so um, I don't know why I still want us to dwell upon these statistics. If you look at the, the percentage of um, 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 education deprivation, in other words, mm. there is 73%. Mm. They say 73% are deprived in terms of education. Can we talk a little bit on this? Because as I was sitting here without looking at these statistics, before you know, going through all this and looking at the statistics, I actually sat around and, and I said, Kavangos are the most educated in Namibia. And then I was shocked to see that 73% are deprived in terms of education. Why is that so? What exactly is the problem there? Uh, oh, 73, Why 73, 73 percent? 73 percent of the population in Kavango deprived, deprived from education. No, that, that can't be correct because that can't be mm -hmm. correct because Kavango, uh, as, as far as I know, Kavango is one of the regions that have, have more schools deployed. 
everywhere. And we know that schools, uh, for instance, the schools in town, they are fully packed with learners. Mm-hmm. We know we we know how much how much how much education is being uh, is being is being is is is, is being attended in Kavango region. Kavango region being deprived seventy percent. I mean thirty percent. That is that does not reflect the, the the reality of Kavango. It can't be correct because uh, I mean when statistics are given, for instance, they should mention uh, specific places. Say for instance, no Kayengona, we have uh, we have uh, we have found that this number of people supposed to fall in the category of attending school or this uh, this grade, but yet it's only this and that. Such statistics should be a little bit in detail for us to really look at whether it it, it reflects the reality of the region or not. Because to mention that 73% deprivation of education, no. As a scholar, I wouldn't want to go for that because it's not reliable. There's, they are not. So detailed. you're saying that the statistics are not reliable. I uh, know they are not reliable. They are not reliable. reliable. Okay, you they mentioned that we have a lot of schools in Kavango region, mm. right? You mentioned that yeah. we have a lot of schools. Now my question is: Does having a lot of schools mean that you know um, the 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 rate of education is as as well increased? Uh, Does having, having more having, school mean more, having more ed- people that are educated? Uh, having more schools uh, does not really make a, a, a connection of having more people that are educated. Uh, but uh, this is a, 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 a secret that is out there that Kavango mm-hmm. produces uh, a number of potential people who have gone through education, who have gone, uh, who have gone through all the stages of perhaps that could be regarding as uh, having having been through a developmental stage. Kavango, imagine how many doctors do we have in Kavango, and how many students do we send to university? Uh, we have private schools that are even uh, most of the times coming out as number one, number two in ranking in terms of the country. And then if we go deep inland, inland, if perhaps uh, those are schools that we could not access every time, those uh, reports are supposed to be coming out that learners, learners are not attending schools, but we don't get those reports and I don't know how the statistics were drawn. That is where I get a little bit confused. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Um, now, let us go back to the narrative now. We have this narrative. It's all over. It's written. It's on the internet. Everybody mm. sees Kavango as the poorest region in mm. Namibia. How then do we change this narrative? Uh, the, only, the only way we can change this narrative is... Uh... Uh, the agencies that are there that are supposed to be responsible for collecting this data should not be uh, centralized, for instance, in the capital city. Obviously, we have those that are supposed to be working from the region. And from the region should be people that really know the region. It will not make sense to wait for, for somebody from outside to come and take statistics on our behalf. It is like we need to write our own history. We should not depend from uh, an outsider to come and uh, pick up or point out what is happening in the region and all that. I mean, uh, we have we have people who can do that. The the Namibia the Namibian Statistic Agency, when it comes here, if it comes here with people that don't know the region, and we have people who know the region, and uh, again, if they come here and they only focus on uh, at places where they they can they can reach and places that. Uh, they could get negative, uh, negative, uh, neg- negative stuff. It's something that needs to be looked at because it's a big concern. At the end of the day, it's just taking a wrong picture for the region, which is not right. Statistics can be taken. Statistics should be given to those that are on the ground, not a person that comes from outside because cert- certain reports are just written in order to, to give that bad image that people have had to a particular place in the past. I think that is how we should go about it if we want to start looking at or owning our own problems and see how we can solve them. 
Okay, uh, you mentioned you dwelled upon, you know, the statistics as having representatives that can come and take statistics, but that doesn't change um, the fact that we still have issues within our own region that we have to deal with. Okay, you mentioned uh, that education, in terms of education, you don't think we are deprived because we have a lot of schools, but there's still another fact that says that 90% are deprived in terms of living conditions or living environments. Let us talk about living conditions in Kavango um, uh, region. Do you think that almost everybody, or should you say that 50% um, uh, of, of Kavangos or um, the population of Kavango is living well in the correct or proper um, living conditions as well as environment? Yeah, this is, this if you is look why at I Kavango as a whole. If I look at Kavango as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you bring issues of... Uh, Let's say let's let me just touch a little bit again on deprivation because when you say you are deprived, mm -hmm. when you say you are deprived, it means you are not given what's supposed to be given to you. Number one. And if you say I'm deprived, it means the thing is given to you, but it's given to you with a condition. For instance, we say the schools are available in the region. When mm -hmm. we talk about being deprived, are we saying that learners are being retained because of the fees that are put in place? The learners are being deprived because the schools are maybe located over long distances, of which the whole of this thing, if there is a, a small percentage of those that are living in that condition, that is why it cannot amount to the whole of 73%. It cannot be correct. So if we look at the region as a whole, and then uh, poverty is concluded upon this, are we looking at how many people afford uh, their basic needs or what are we saying? But then if we look at either not affording their basic needs, we need to know what is the statistic of the workforce that is employed and that that is not employed such statistics could give us accurate information so that we know whether the region is, 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 is full of uh, young people or capable people that are not employed, or the region is full of people who are employed. The statistic giving us that no, we don't have, uh, or we don't fall within the, the category of uh, regions that maybe are developed Statistics need to be clear so that we look at this is a problem and how do we tackle it. Perhaps in that way we could uh, actually respond to such things more correctly. Isn't it? But um, Mr. Kanjili, if you look at it, it also states clearly that 50% mm. of the Kavango population is unemployed. And I, I believe mm. when we are looking at uh, poverty, um, uh, one of the indicators is the, the living standards, water, sanitation, you know, um, assets and all that. And then, of course, we are talking about education, enrollment in schools and so on. And then, of course, we also look at health, you know, nutrition and all that. So if let us focus on these three things that I've mentioned. When you look mm. at our region in terms of health, Okay, that's number one. And then in terms of living standards, sanitation, you know, um, availability of water and all that, which I believe has been an issue in the past a few years, uh, despite the fact that we have a river. And then uh, education, of course, we have mentioned that we have a university, even though we do not have um, a lot of universities compared to other towns, because then of which, um, because uh, it could be because we don't speak up as a region, or I don't know what it is that they look at or what indicators they look at before they decide, okay, we are going to establish campuses, you know, um, in this region. And then, um, yeah, in terms of health, nutrition, you know, how is our region, if I may ask that question, living standards? Is uh, everyone affording water? Is everyone affording food. I read in the papers about a girl, a young girl in one of uh, the villages in Kavango East who could not go to school because, you know, uh, uh, she, she didn't have three meals a day, no breakfast. She goes to school on an empty stomach. Let us tackle all those things. 
Yeah, no, it, it, if, 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 we, if we reason based on how, on a specific person mm-hmm. that perhaps was, 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 was reported not to have, uh, to have had three meals in the day, it is not mm-hmm. going to help us because uh, one person out of many, it is why we are saying that the region is just tarnished on uh, specific small issues. And mm-hmm. then the reason why I, I keep on saying I do not mm-hmm. want to accept that Kavango region is poor. It's because mm-hmm. uh, when we come up with the word poverty, it means we mm-hmm. we we run away from accounting or, or 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 holding certain people accountable. That is why the word underdevelopment makes more sense because when we say underdevelopment, then the question will arise: Who was supposed to develop? Then certain people will mm-hmm. be will be will be held accountable. For, for example. If we say people are not affording water, the water is available, the water is supposed to be taken to them. A person who mm-hmm. is paying, for example, a hundred dollars to a neighbor because the neighbor supplies water to him or her, could that person not manage his or her own tap in the house? Who is not doing his job here? Is it the person that is not affording or is the service provider that is not bringing the service to the person? At the end of the day, when this person, when this person is asked whether the person has water or not, it will be written in the, in the, in, in the statistic that the person cannot afford to have water. And at the end of the day, it amounts to the word poverty. So it is, it is the services that are not being taken to the people. Mm-hmm. This cannot, cannot make me say the region is poor. No. The service providers are failing the people, and as a result, the people are being said to be poor. Now, if we look at the high unemployment rate, for example, mm-hmm. or the people that are deprived from, from maybe uh, now I should talk about higher education because a person who is already struggling to to provide for himself or her, for herself uh, completes grade twelve. I don't think the person will risk to go or, or, or look for a university outside the region. Most of the people are left with no choice but to remain in the region without feathering their studies. And at the end of the day, this number keeps increasing and increasing. This is where our national leaders are supposed to be informed and see the need on how they could improve such a situation. I still maintain that the region is not poor. The region is just underdeveloped. The service providers are failing the region, nothing else. Okay. All right. Before we continue, I'd just like to read out a few comments that came through. So uh, Kemi is still saying with the vast arable and fertile land in Kavango, and mm. they still import uh, tomatoes, then something is seriously wrong. So we have this yep. vast arable and fertile land, but we are still importing tomatoes. Something is seriously mm. wrong. I think we need to come back to this one. And um, yeah. he also says there's a different... There's a difference between underdeveloped and being poor. There's a difference between underdeveloped and being poor. We'll come back to this one as well. And Albert is saying, mm. I think there is a contradiction somewhere on private schools because you mentioned the issue of private schools doing well topping. For example, we have St. Boniface. Now, Rukonga Vision School, these are the two schools that have been topping. Of course, Elson Kurenkuru High School is amongst them and a lot of other schools that I, I can mention. Uh, so he is saying that um, there is a contradiction somewhere on private schools. Get statistics, you will be informed. Example, St. Boniface, how many local children? Yes, I was going to come to this question as well. How many local children are admitted to that school? Very few. They cannot even reach up to 50% of intake yearly. That is the reality. I'm mm. also going to come back to this one and talk about the Conga Vision School as well. And then, of course... Um, Okay, I think I lost her. Okay, Annette is saying, I believe if we stopped defining success as going to university only, then we can solve the issue of great child failure contributing to poverty. There are so many business opportunities to be explored, and one does not need a degree to start. Uh, also, one does not need to pass great child to go to a voc- vocational center. All right. And mm. then uh, Kem is still saying it's very obvious and glaring that the people of Kavango are poor. <laughs> so that, I guess, is responding to you. And then Charlie well, is uh, uh, can saying... You, can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Yes, it says it's very ob- 
obvious and glaring that the people of Kavango are poor. You are maintaining that we are not poor, but he is saying that it's obvious that we are poor. And then Charlie is yeah. saying, what are the economic indicators of faculties in the two Kavango uh, Kavangos? Others mm. have fish, diamonds, and others have minerals. We have water that is not utilized mm. at full capacity. We have high birth rate in the two mm. Kavangos, hence the poverty rate. There is a direct relationship between poverty and high birth rate, which is supported by high teenage pregnancies. Look after, fi uh, um, look after finishing school. Where else are you employed if not education? Those who are not making it in school, where are they finding themselves, okay? And then uh, Kemi still continues, how much is the income head per capita of Kavangos? How much is the, um, I want us to go back, uh, first of all, I want us to go back to the issues of, you know, uh, the private schools. Yes, you mentioned that we have got private schools that are topping um, in terms of grade 12 results. Of course, we have uh, the Congo Vision School and we have St. Boniface. And he says that 50% of this uh, these learners that are admitted at these schools are not from Kavango. And that is the same with Rukonga Vision School as well. That is one thing I have noticed. Mm -hmm. How I found out, I'm not going to mention that, but I've also noticed or I also found out that Rukonga Vision School, most of the students there are not just from Kavango. And these are the schools that are topping. Should we be proud and should we proudly say that these learners, should we own them and say they are ours and they are contributing to the fact that Kavangos are educated? Yeah, if, if, if you 50 look at fifty percent of them are from Kavango region. Yeah, if you look, if you look at uh, the uh, the admission, perhaps if we study the admission policy of uh, Saint Boniface uh -huh. and maybe uh -huh. Rukonga Vision School. Uh, I still, I still say, how do they come about their admission policy? Who are the stakeholders that uh, are consulted? For example, the, the, the fact that uh, St. Boniface, for instance, is found in Kavango region. St. Boniface is supposed to be operating within certain conditions in order to advance the agendas of the region by looking at the people in the region first. But then uh, for themselves on their own, they will never think of that if they look at the fact that uh, many people in Kavango are not maybe uh, affording to pay the fees that they asked. That's why we have to take people that come with money. Maybe we take those that are ready to pay. Who are then? That's why I still come back to the, to, to the fact that what do the leaders do in the region? With, 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 with such things. Should we still say uh, the school is wrong or the school is supposed to operate within a certain, certain parameters that they should not uh, go beyond this, they should be within this and that? that, that we, 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 we seem not to do anything in the favor of the people in the region. Because if you say, mm -hmm. let's say maybe 70% 70, 70 of uh, the people admitted at St. Boniface are from the other school. The question is, are the people in the region not passing or it's because the fees are too high for the people in the region? Such things are supposed to be made clear. And if it's not clear, we'll go with the narrative of saying that the people of Kavango, they are not affording to pay or they are poor. They don't have money to pay for, the, for, for, for such things. How many, how many of uh, uh, the, how, how, how many learners of the region remain seated because they have no choice? to continue, mm -hmm. or they, they, they have no choice to go to university. They have no choice but to go to a school maybe that is not doing better. The admission policies of this school, especially the private school, what do they look at before they, they reject people from them? And the people that come from outside the region, they are always welcome. That particular thing, the Ministry of Education, if it doesn't look at it, what is happening, and inform the people accordingly, something is failing. We need, we need to keep ourselves with what is on, on the ground. No, this and this is happening. The reason why it's happening is because of this, of this. No, this is, that if that is the case, the office should do this and this and this to solve the problem. And such things, if it doesn't happen, will continue to be regarded as poor. 
I think mm-hmm. that one is clear. Mm. Okay, so so uh, all right. So in other words, we we'll still go back to the fact that it is our representatives, you know, that are doing uh, that. Are not they play a role. They play a role. Mm. They do play a role. So they are the ones that are not assisting us. They are the ones that are not doing us a favor as the, the, the residents of, 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 of the two Kavango regions. That is why they continue regarding us as, as poor. All right, so uh, um, I, I would like us to go back to this point that was made, that we have arable and fertile land in Kavango and they, they are still importing tomatoes. Why are they still importing tomatoes? What could be the problem there? Why can't we? We as individuals, yeah. even ourselves, buy from the local markets. I want you to, yeah. to be the voice of the people of Kavangos. <laughs> now, no, no, I think we have already touched on that. That's why I said, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. for as long as we keep running away from uh, holding our leaders accountable, nothing will work out because those are the people that are put in place. I, I already said that the people in Kavango, our mothers try by all means, they sweat in the sun to make sure that uh, they practice what they know best, which is maybe this low small scale farming, produce all this fresh produce. But if there is no representative that will stand up and say, hello, okay, food, shop right, we do not want you guys to import this and this and this because it should be locally produced. Did they ever stand up and do that? This uh, this person who is struggling to grow tomato, this person grows tomato, she harvests good harvest. At the end of the day, this person uh, will, will, will go and uh, approach the OK food shop maybe or shop right. And this person will say, no, today we don't want to buy because we already have tomato. Tomato came from where? From South Africa, for instance. This person will go back and have to sell out those tomatoes on prices which are not of her preference, just to avoid these things not from getting from from getting bad. So, it, with the land and the water that we have, why not making sure that we create or we take advantage of what we have? Like, uh, for instance, I have not I have not been uh, in South Africa, but uh, with what I see. With, with what I see on social media is that South Africa is full of farmlands that are productive. And this thing is not supposed to be done in Kavango because we have all it takes. So if we don't have uh, hectares of, of land producing this, producing that, it means we are not taking, uh, taking advantage of what we have to our best advantage. That is the land, that is the water. We have the rose woods, as I mentioned already, the timber. Why can't we make use of these uh, econ- economic indicators in the region so that we don't depend much from certain things that we don't produce in the region? But then if we are not starting from somewhere and we know who are the people that are supposed to do it and yet we hide behind saying, no, everybody mm-hmm. should do his part and all that, it is a lie. That's why things will not move because there are people who get salary every month in order to provide certain things, but they don't do it. And when you ask, they say, what you, what are you as a person doing? And I will still ask, who is receiving the salary of a, a person that's supposed to be responsible? We need to, we need to work. When you, are, when, when you are in a position, you need to work for those that depend from you. Otherwise, importing, importing things that can be produced in the region can only be regulated by lawmakers because nobody will listen to a, to a person who's coming from Kaisosi yeah. to say, okay, food, mm-hmm. okay, food should stop bringing things that we can produce. That person will never be listened to and will never have the get the guts to approach such a shop. But the lawmakers, they're supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, just to our viewers, if there's anybody that would like to come on top and view their opinions, I've dropped a link. That link that I've dropped in the comment section if you click on it, it will take you up to come and view your comments, uh, to come and give your, your views, rather. So um, we have actually touched much on, you know, uh, the services not being provided properly or the people that uh, are supposed to provide services are not coming to us as individuals, okay? Now, um, my question is, 
what role then can we as residents, okay? Because we have realized and we have noticed and we know that there are people up there that are just sitting and not doing mm -hmm. anything at all and not speaking for us as a region. I don't know, maybe it's because they are comfortably sitting in their chairs and they feel like I do not have a problem, I do not have an issue, so why would I go up there and, and speak for the rest of the people? So what is our role then as residents? How do we come in to make sure that the people that we put in power are doing what is supposed to be done to the benefit of the region? Because we do not want come... Um, um, I think the statistics is taken after each five years, uh, we still ranked as the poorest. We mm. want to see some improvements. So that means that we as residents, we also have to do something about it because if we sit back and then relax and say, okay, the person on top must do, the person on top must do. Is there something that we can do? What role can we play as, as residents? Maybe. Uh, uh, no, the people, the people of Kavango in general, uh, mm -hmm. they, 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 they say we are, we are, we are very humble. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as, such, as such, we always sit back and wait and watch the show from the hands of other people. But then uh, if we advocate for people to, to hold accountable those that are supposed to work for them, the first thing that will be mentioned is that they have started to be uh, chaotic. They want to bring chaos in the country. So it is, it is like we have people who are at the top. Mm -hmm. last, time we, 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 last time we met here, we, we were talking about uh, everybody has a supervisor. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody having a supervisor, it means those supervisors are supposed to make sure that the work of those officers are working or, or the work is being performed. But then if the supervisors don't care and they're the ones who even get more money in terms of salary, they don't care. How about the person who's below that particular supervisor? This person will, 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 even, will even do it double... Uh, laziness that is, is being observed from the from the boss. So if there was a way, if there was a way for those that could uh, call these people to book, for instance, if if statistics as, as those that you you were you were reading have reached the people that oversee uh, the activities of the region. Why, why does it not uh, act as an alarm to them? Why don't they react to it? Why, did, why don't they find out what is happening? I, I, I mean, if, if, I, if I'm given an office and people expect something good from me and it's not being given, what do I do? What do I do as a person that is overseeing that particular office? You are supposed to provide this. You are supposed to provide this. If you are not providing, what should I do? For example, if we look at... Uh, uh, let's say town council, the 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 ministry of uh, local local governance, local government. There is a minister there, and the minister maybe comes across issues of uh, the council not functioning properly. What does the minister do? How does the minister hold these people accountable? And if the minister is not doing that, who am I to stand up and go do that? If I don't, if if I don't make that person sign anything, and what are the what are the what are the conditions of that particular office? If you don't do this, what is going to happen? Why don't they why they why don't they execute that? There are many people who are ready to work, and if uh, we keep on uh, relaxing and sitting on our duties, things will never move. It, they will never move. Something needs to happen, but then we have those people that have to be held accountable. For example, it is difficult for, for, for people in Kavango, for instance, to stand up and try to make sure that they disturb the service providers in order for them to, stop, to provide the services they need. Because it's like uh, they, have, uh, they have gotten so used and they are so reluctant. It's like, I don't know, they are waiting for which Messiah to come and... Uh, rescue them from these conditions 
as for me, I'm that person that really cares about these things, and I see that there's no support around. Uh, the others are just fine with it. They are just fine. So I think it should start from the top. The top should uh, try to hold accountable their, their subordinates, and maybe things will work in that manner. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mentioned one very important thing, that people mm. are reluctant, people are comfortable, everyone is fine with whatever is going mm. on. They see these statistics, yeah. but they just sit back and relax. Could it be... Mm. I want to take you back to your point of saying we are not poor, we are underdeveloped. Could it be that they have it in their mind that we are not poor, so perhaps when they see these statistics, they look at it and put it in a way and say, these are all propagandas, these are all lies, we are fine, we are not poor, and then they sit back and relax. Could this be perhaps the reason? Don't you think it could be, rather? Why uh, people no, are I comfortable think, when I, people I, I are don't, relaxed? I don't think they say they are fine. I don't. I don't think saying they are fine is uh, how they are. Mm -hmm. They might be hide. They might be hiding behind the notion of saying we are not poor. We are fine. Mm -hmm. That is why. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I said when we say uh, uh, when we advocate for the word poverty, it makes uh, mm -hmm. some of these people that we are talking about to admit that they are poor and nothing they can do they can they can do nothing but if we take the approach of looking at uh, how mm -hmm. underdeveloped we are because it is services it is services that uh, are established that will solve the problem of unemployment for example it is services that are provided that will improve the living condition of the people but then if we keep on saying that we are poor, mm -hmm. it means we will accept the word that we are poor and we have nothing to do. Why don't we look at who are those that are not doing their work? Because when such is solved, it, it solves a bigger problem. If, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I bring a, a factory, for example, a factory that my office is supposed to provide, how many people will I employ? Didn't I solve one problem of uh, employment? Didn't I solve one problem of uh, providing meals to a family. So we need to start from somewhere. We are perhaps trying to address our, our, our regional problems uh, with, with different solutions, which are wrong, perhaps. Because otherwise, we tackle this thing head on. I'm sure we are, not, we are going to get out of this in, in the blink of an eye if we just start doing what we, we are mandated to do. The word poverty, I don't want to associate with, uh, myself with it. Because that word does not really, it's not a good word and it does not reflect. It's not a region. good word to be really, associated with. Ah, it's not a good word. It's not a good word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we rather, we, we, we rather look at accountability. And when this accountability mm -hmm. is solved, I'm sure it will solve a lot of problems. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, if they are not watching some of these people that we are supposed to hold accountable for, if they are not watching, yeah. It could probably reach them and all that. Um, now, uh, you have also mentioned that, I, I think you say that if there is a way that we can hold these people accountable, when you say if there is a way, are we saying that there could be no way at all for us to hold people accountable, for us to make sure that services, the services that we deserve are being provided to us by the mm. representative? Are you trying to say that there's no way at all when you say if there is a way? Uh, if, if, uh, when I say that if there is a way is because I have looked mm -hmm. at uh, I have looked at what is happening on the ground. Uh, many mm -hmm. people many people have tried to, to advocate for, for good things in the region, but what you see is that the same people are going to turn against those that are standing up. So that's why if there was a way which I don't see it on the ground here, and I suggest it should start from the top. If there was a way to start holding accountable, for example, the top person, let's say the minister, it could be a little bit better because the minister hold accountable the local authority or the local government on the ground, and it starts from there. Those responsible hold accountable those below them and all that, since the bottom-up approach could not work, maybe the top-down uh, approach could make a difference. Because really, uh, 
what is happening here is that uh, everybody is just fine and sitting back nothing is happening because if you if you, how do you prove to the people that you are willing to do your work but this and this is missing why don't you talk why don't you hold uh, community engagement engage the community if the people are complaining and you think you are trying and one person at the under the, the other end is the one who's failing you let the people know but then is it really happening or do we keep on saying i don't want to mention name a i don't want to, name, to mention name b because it might affect my my job and all that are we going to develop mm-hmm. the region in this manner i don't think it will happen so it is it is time it's time we need to hold these people accountable whatever the way if those that are seated and relaxing feeling okay with what is happening i wish they could change and i wish there was a way mm-hmm. to change them because otherwise uh, a number of people are suffering on behalf of those that could could do something to solve such problems Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, just before we we say the last words, I would like to read out some comments here. As uh, Charlie is saying that if we admit that we are poor without shame, we will do justice to ourselves. Let us teach and advocate for our entrepreneurs. Let's go back and uplift our families. Put your education to practice. Leave the office and classroom and go implement things. Invite investors. So from the look of things. Uh, what charlie is is saying here is that we sh- as individuals should do something we as individuals should also invite investors um you know uh, it it looks like uh, he's trying to say that we need to do something at the grassroots level as well and not expect only the people at the top um to be doing things for us and then uh somebody also came through came is saying people need to to be um Read tools, risk tools. One single digit loan interest should be appropriate for the farmers to acquire machineries and uh, so as to enhance productivity. And then Annette is saying our uh, people are also too reluctant, really. Many are seated waiting for opportunities to come to them. For example, many newly educated graduates refuse to work at villages after graduating and no representative can help with that um that is our mindset as the residents that must change and do something to improve our living standards because that is an indicator too and our youth have set up unnecessary standards that make no sense at all development starts at your home in your family i think this is just trying to emphasize what um charlie has said in your family and no representative can help with that okay. really um and then uh kemi is still saying also if you can accept reality of being poor how do you find solutions it's like a sick man who can agree that he is sick he will end up in an ambulance to the hospital so these are the comments we have 3 minutes mr kanjilu in 3 minutes in 3 mm. minutes how do we conclude this how do we conclude this Okay you have mentioned that we should hold people accountable okay we should hold people accountable and we both want to see you know Kavango region being removed if i can remember perfectly i think zambezi used to be on the top 3 but if we look at zambezi now it's no more there how do we you know make sure apart from what you have said okay apart from what you have said about service provisions and stuff Okay. Uh, What other things maybe should be done in two minutes? Uh, yeah, no. Um this is this is this is where we we differ a little bit because when you mm-hmm. for example the the comments that came from Mr. Charlie of us ac- uh, accepting mm-hmm. that we are poor without mm-hmm. shame. And then mm-hmm. his last word is uh, for the people to invite investors. Come on. what can what kind of an investor will will a, will a person in in kehemu invite who was supposed to, to to invite an investor what 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 kind of security will the person in in sawema give to a person who is in europe that's supposed to come and do something it is it is like those that speak about uh, letting the uh, the the residents do something are the ones who, mm-hmm. who are living in uh, in conditions where uh, the government have done something for them 
and uh, what is left is for them to do their part. It is not the people mm-hmm. that should start. The government must start. So what is, what is happening in Kavango is that uh, the government does not want to start for the people and they want people to start. I don't know how. So this is one thing that we need to understand. When you are given uh, that privilege by giving you something and then for you to do your part, it's not the same with somebody who is not given any any basic start-up condition for him to finish up and so. We all know, we all know that everybody is supposed to do his or her part, but there is a point where you need to start. And that point where you need to start is the one that people are missing out. They don't see where the, pe- the person is supposed to start from. A, 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 for example, if, if we talk about uh, the number or the population, for instance, the government mm-hmm. is aware that the region is overpopulated or well populated, and yet the, 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 the government does not come up with plans to solve the problem of schools. Should a person in a location stand up and go build a school? That is the question. So when we plan plan for the future, we need to respond to the needs of the people. This community has grown. How do we help them? But then we are saying this community has grown. See, 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 see it on your own and see what you can do for yourself. Is that what we are saying? Accountability cannot be shifted. Accountability is directed to a specific person. And this specific person needs to attend to it. For example, if I am a teacher and uh, my subject learners are failing and outsiders will say to the principal or we hear that uh, the school A is not performing. Now, should the principal also just come and say our school is not performing? Or should the principal look for those subjects that are dragging the school down? If you will, if you will just be singing ar- around and say, no, the school is not performing, not performing, there are those teachers that are not teaching that will hide behind and say, no, we are fine because they are not being pointed and all that. It is the, the, the whole school. So that is where accountability is left to 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 to, 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 to flow just like that and nobody is held accountable. If there is a problem, there should be somebody responsible. What is wrong? Why is the person not delivering? Otherwise, saying, no, we should accept, we should accept. Accept to do what? Let those responsible do their job and then everything will be fine. Let's try something new instead of just putting fingers to everybody that is around and say everybody's supposed to do their part. How? If we are, in, if we are assigned with uh, duties and responsibilities. I think mm-hmm. that should summarize everything. All right. Thank you very much for coming through, Mr. Kanjilu, for yet another fruitful discussion. And to all our viewers who have been here bringing, in, uh, bringing through their comments, thank you very much. I will see you again, or we will see you again next week on Sunday, same time, same place. This is us signing out. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. All right.